This is Problem Solved, the IISE podcast, where we talk to industrial and systems engineers about their work, ideas, and solutions. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Problem Solved, the IISE podcast. I'm David Brandt, Web Managing Editor for the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers, a producer on Problem Solved, and a big fan of healthcare systems engineering, which is why today I'm talking to two key leaders of one of IISE's most active membership wings, the Society for Health Systems, also known as SHS. Joining me to discuss the state of the society is SHS President Mary Ellen Skeens and President-elect Lauren Todd. Mary Ellen is the current Solutions Services Capability Leader for Philips Monitoring and Analytic Services business. She has more than 20 years of experience in healthcare IT solution implementation, consulting, and process improvement. She also holds professional certifications, including ASQ Certified Six Sigma Black Belt, Lean Foundation, Project Management Professional, and Certified Professional in Healthcare Information and Management Systems. As I mentioned, Mary Ellen is the current president as well as a SHS diplomate with previous experience on the board of directors and as HSPI conference chair. Lauren Todd is the current director of staffing efficiency for HCA Healthcare's Paralon. She works cross-functionally with leadership to optimize the organization's staffing and identify areas for improvement that will enable achievement of company goals. Before this role, she worked as Director of Strategic Planning and Business Development for Intermountain Healthcare in Salt Lake City, Utah. She also has manufacturing and consulting experience with General Electric. Lauren is indeed the incoming president for SHS, where she has been involved for 13 years. Madam's president or Madam Presidents, that's a debate for later. Welcome to Problem Solved. Nice to be here, David. Thank you, David. Happy to be here. So we're closing in on the end of 2020, and I doubt few would disagree that this has been a year of significant challenges in many respects, particularly in healthcare, for all the obvious reasons. With this continuing to be on all of our minds, what has been the focus of SHS lately and what will it be in the new year? SHS has really been focusing this year on how to help our SHS members and their healthcare organizations through the COVID-19 crisis, including sharing best practices in the COVID think tank sessions. And as people are really craving connections to provide opportunities for members to come together for virtual networking and knowledge transfer through webinars, panel sessions, and of course, preparing for the conference activities next year. Lauren, anything to add to that? No one knows what's actually coming down the pipe for the new year or even next month, but I have faith and knowledge that our great teams will continue to take on each challenge and solve it with a PI mindset. And the whole joy of this group is that we take the uncertainty, throw some data and analytics at it, and create a solution to try out and continue to improve and fail forward. As a matter of SHS business, the new year also means some changes in the volunteer leadership. Members of SHS have already received their ballots for the new board of directors for next year. Is that correct? That is correct. And we would encourage everyone to take the time to submit their ballot, um, both for our open board of director positions and president-elect position. For those listeners who are getting an introduction right now to the Society for Health Systems, can you elaborate on the mission and vision of SHS? Sure thing, David. Um, We're a society under, like you said, the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers, consisting of approximately 700 members right now. But our membership consists of more than just engineers. We're process improvement professionals, administrators, clinicians, and students working to improve lives through better healthcare delivery. In fact, that's our mission. And we accomplish that mission through creating a culture of continuous improvement within healthcare organizations. And we do that by cultivating a community of healthcare improvement professionals that is passionate about making a difference, fostering innovative problem solving through systems thinking, developing healthcare leaders, professionals, clinicians, and students, and influencing leaders and decision makers on the future design of healthcare. 
we provide many opportunities for these members and the community at large through education, via webinars, podcasts like this one, training, local events, and networking. We have a lot of online resources that also include a career center. We match mentors and mentees together and our excellent annual conference coming up next year. So then what can you tell us about the society's strategic priorities and goals in the months and year ahead? We have three key strategic priorities. They are first and foremost, member engagement. We want to grow SHS membership by extending value through meaningful member interactions. Secondly, development, including the personal growth of our members through education, networking experiences, and collaboration. And lastly, branding. We want to create a consistent identity for the Society for Health Systems and for us as healthcare improvement professionals that is recognized across the industry. Interestingly enough, our goals were developed back in February in conjunction with the annual board of directors meeting. Um, A lot has changed considering COVID hit in March, but our goal is still very much growing member engagement. And again, creating these connections, providing a network, um, which is needed now more than ever within our Society for Health Systems community. And Lauren, do you want to share the work around strategic planning that's currently happening? Sure thing, Mary Ellen. Just like any properly run organization, we review and revisit our strategic plan on a regular basis. Our last review included those strategic priorities Mary Ellen just went through. However, we are in the midst of that review right now. So stay tuned for a revamp on our strategic priorities that includes support during the COVID-19 experiences and a shift into more value-based care scenarios for our members. The Healthcare Systems Process Improvement Conference 2021 takes place early next year. I attend a lot of conferences through the year, but this is absolutely one of my favorites to attend. And it's always intended by really enthusiastic process improvement practitioners from around the healthcare systems industry. What other details can you share about that event? That's right, David. It's not just your favorite. I know it's Mary Ellen and I's favorite conference, too. Our wonderful annual conference is scheduled for next year, February 24th through the 26th. We're excited about our virtual option this year for both attendees and presenters. We're looking forward to the ability to have global attendance and the diversity and extra perspectives that we'll provide. So sign yourself up to make sure you have the best experience for our conference next year. We have a great slate of presenters ready, including two great keynote speakers. First, we have Dr. Goldstein, who will describe the hazards related to the risks and challenges of transplant programs, the ones that they face to help critically ill population with a limited organ supply. In addition, we have Nathan Hurl, Senior Director of the Enterprise Continuous Improvement for Cleveland Clinic. He will be taking us through the journey of one of the top healthcare systems in the country where they have been pursuing a culture where every caregiver is capable, empowered, and expected to make improvements. You'll hear about the clinic's successes and challenges in implementing this model in an environment without the traditional desired burning platform. Well, that's all really exciting. Uh, Are there any other highlights or special recognitions taking place at the conference? There sure are. Every year we do a set of great recognition for our members and those that contribute to the professional society. Uh, For example, we do the President's Award. Last year, that was awarded to Mark Graven. We have diplomates who provide content and volunteer support to our organization and to the process improvement profession. This year, we will be honoring Eddie perez Liberté. Cody Hall, Benjamin Schleich, Kevin Northrup, and hopefully a few more if you can get your application in 
by February. Also, every year we do a few competitions and scholarships. Just two examples are undergraduate scholarship winner and our Flex Sim student simulation competition winners. There may be more this year, so stay tuned. All right. Well, you heard it. Get your Diplomate applications in. Time's a ticking, everybody. <laughs> Time's a ticking. Some of our listeners likely work in healthcare or healthcare systems. So how can they become involved with SHS? David, one of the ways they can become involved, of course, is to join SHS. And we do have a community on IISE Connect, which is a great way to reach out to other members and Also, um, our events are posted to that site. Um, Another way to get involved is to volunteer. We, We have multiple committees that are looking for volunteers, and you can also be part of a community of practice, um, sharing ideas on social media, Of course, attending the HSPI 2021 conference and being a presenter or even helping with the conference. These are just some examples of how someone could get involved in the society. And and Lauren and I would be happy to speak directly with um, with interested members. Thanks, Mary Ellen. Another way you could get involved if all of those options sound great to you is just to email us so we could start the conversation. You can get a hold of us at questions.shs at gmail.com. Well, I think this was a great opportunity to share more information about the Society for Health Systems with our listeners. We certainly hope that students and industry professionals have been inspired to join, act, and help deliver positive change to healthcare going forward. So on that note, my thanks to Mary Ellen and Lauren for joining us today. And despite what the year has brought us, I certainly wish both you and our listeners a happy and healthy holiday season in the weeks to come. Thanks so much. Thanks, David. Thank you, David. Welcome back, everybody. In this segment, we're talking about the Healthcare Systems Process Improvement Conference 2021, a virtual event this year that will feature numerous sessions, networking opportunities, and other events on a virtual platform. Joining me today is Ben Schleich. He is the Manager of Nephrology, Transplant Patient Safety and Quality at Hackensack University Medical Center, and he's also the Chair of HSPI 2021. And Ali Hobbs, Healthcare Analyst at Catalyst, a Haskell company in Charlotte, North Carolina. She will be the chair of HSPI 2022, but is nevertheless involved with 2021 as well. Ben and Allie, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, David, for having us. Yeah, thank you. This is going to be great. This is a different experience this time around. We were all in Savannah, Georgia in 2020, right at the end of February, which is about the time that the obvious story of the year being the coronavirus, COVID-19, had actually begun affecting people in the United States. It was a conversation uh, that really was taking off. I don't even think we were halfway through day two of the conference, and it was suddenly the focus. We're obviously months deep into the pandemic situation. We've all learned to adopt and adapt as we've needed to, but this is a situation that will continue going on for a while. And that has had an impact on a lot of different aspects, uh, not just our conference, but also surely in the kind of work that both of you are involved in. I'll start with Ben. Tell me a little bit about how COVID-19 has impacted the work that you do. So COVID-19 has impacted me a lot um, when they redistributed staff to different or relocated staff to different areas. My task was actually to round on all COVID units to see what are some difficulties they're having either process-wise, material-wise, staffing-wise, and then escalate those and try to improve processes and get the materials they need on the floor. Um, Not even that, but from my daily time from working from eight to five, my shift change from working from six until sometimes three in the morning. The nice thing about it, I was able to take over daycare and spend more time with my uh, firstborn daughter. And while the pandemic was unleashing on the US, I actually had my second daughter was with her together in the hospital with my wife. So 
good and bad things happening throughout this pandemic for me. Certainly sounds like it. Uh, Ali, what about you? Yeah. So as a healthcare consultant, we had to pretty immediately transition from being on site at these hospitals to telecommunicating via Zoom, via Teams. I think we went through four different transitions on just platforms we were using for virtuals. Um, But we also transitioned from our typical process improvement implementation work on general processes within the hospital to more COVID focus. So how are we going to reestablish those elective surgeries? How are we going to slowly bring those back so that they're safe? So pretty much every aspect from physical location to specific process improvements we were doing in the hospital was drastically impacted. But it's been a it's been a fun lear- learning curve for sure. <laughs> well, certainly something that a lot of people I think will attest to uh, as we gather virtually for the conference. And that leads me to ask, having to make such an adjustment from a conference management standpoint, Ben, tell me a little bit about what you guys have had to consider in planning for a virtual event because of COVID? Um, I would say our collaboration with the Institute has definitely become much, much stronger. Um, We have almost weekly exchanges of what we are planning to do in order to make this conference successful. Again, HSPI is usually my favorite conference. Um, One of the main reasons because of networking, you see a lot of people at the same time around you year after year which makes these my, my, my key destination. So one of the challenges we will have this year to create a nice networking experience in addition to all the content that's valuable for other organizations to improve their processes. And then one thing I even was thinking this morning, I, usually when I go to the conference, I come back rejuvenated. So having and creating that this year is definitely something that's going to be a challenge. But going forward, we plan to have this not only as a hybrid, as a part in person and as a part virtual conference going forward to increase our reach and have more people participate. So I think it's we're getting thrown in the water, but we're improving and we're hopefully creating new benchmarks for the future. Allie, anything to add to that? Yeah, I think um, similar to Ben's, one of my favorite parts is, is networking. And I think we're doing a really good job of keeping that at the focus of what we hope to offer for our virtual sessions, making sure we get that time um, and those connections can be made. But something I'm also really excited about is typically at a at any conference, you can only go to as many sessions as the schedule allows. Um, So you can only physically be in so many presentations, whereas with this virtual opportunity is what I'm going to call it. um, We have that benefit of you can go to all of the virtual sessions, but all the ones that will be recorded, you can come back to later. So you have that opportunity in everything at the conference, which is always a good thing because we have such great speakers at this conference. And I think it's going to be really important to keep all that knowledge transfer at the forefront. Any particular aspects of this conference in a virtual format that you didn't have for the live conference? I mean, as Ellie just said, they, you're going to have everything on demand afterwards. So you can participate as sessions are ongoing, but also Later, a week or a month later, you can go in and revisit some of those presentations that you were looking at. We're going to have some nice chat functionality. So people that were usually shy asking uh, presenters questions, they can now chat. So hopefully there's a little bit more interaction that way of people asking questions and trying to get their information. Ali, as the chair for the 2022 conference, what are you hoping to learn from Ben or what are you hoping to observe in this virtual format with, again, the hopes that we're live in 2022? <laughs> what, are you, what are you hoping to learn or observe uh, in order to uh, prepare for uh, that potential return? I have the benefit of obviously the second generation or the next version um, always gets to be a little bit better. And hopefully we plan to do that. I think we could set things up a little bit differently on the front end in participating on the what if this happens, um, because... Although we knew COVID was happening, we still, I mean, even in February, I thought that Labor Day was going to be a go. So we always have these hopes that the live version or that event is going to happen will be there. So I think planning for both at the forefront, just in case, will be a big thing moving forward. 
but I'm excited and hopefully we'll be back live, as you said, in 2022. You certainly see the potential then for maybe a hybrid version going forward. Sounds to be the case. Definitely. I think all options are on the table. I think that's one thing COVID taught us is anything is possible. It could be hybrid. It could be totally virtual. It could be whatever. And the more that we know and learn, the better we can plan for it and make it that much better of a conference. So each of you have been to several of these HSBI conferences. Ben, how many is this for you now? I've been going since I believe 2015 in Orlando. Um, And I think at least I've gone to five, six conferences so far. Okay. Allie, what about you? Yeah, I was actually also started in 2015 as a student though and transition to a professional goer, as you say, <laughs> um, back in 2018. So I've been both. I've been on both sides of that curve. For our potential professional goers, as you put it, uh, (laughs) we'll go with attendees, I think, but (laughs) for the professional goers and um, student goers as well, uh, what would you tell those who haven't attended before and certainly don't have the worry about travel and hotel planning and everything like that that goes with a typical live conference? uh, What would you tell them are the best reasons to attend this one, regardless of the fact that it's virtual? Why attend the healthcare system? process improvement conference well one i think the the people are tremendously open to any questions or help or mentoring at this conference um that's how i got thrown into now thrown into the track of being able to help and support the conference as a first reviewer then i track chair and, and now a conference chair because one of the previous board members was one of my mentor and, and we had a long discussion about um, what my goals in the future are. And he really told me, hey, why don't, why don't you help uh, this conference? It would be great. And, and I enjoy doing it. And if you are a part of the conference comedy or not, you can get so many good networking opportunities and contacts at the conference and also learn uh, new processes or, or, or things that you haven't thought of applying in your organization. Um, or maybe in your future, if you're a student and, and just get more, see if healthcare engineering is really something you like doing and helping others and improving life school. Yeah. And really just echoing Ben, I think he touched on all the key points that the community here is so welcoming and so excited to have industrial engineers and healthcare join them. So something that is unique to IEs and healthcare is typically you're the only one or there's a small group of you in these hospitals or uh, there's a small group of you in the consultant firms. This conference really helps you realize how many of us there really are out there. And to Ben's point earlier, it rejuvenates you um, because sometimes we can be a little beaten down and and what we're able to accomplish and what we've seen other, you leave the conference knowing or seeing and learning what everyone else has been able to accomplish and you then know, hey, I can do that too. Or we can hopefully implement these processes where I'm at, or we can adjust X, Y, Z. So I think that's a really big takeaway from this conference. And one of the benefits of this conference is for those students to see what IEs and healthcare are out there doing and if that's something that they might want to do. And if so, to Ben's point, the networking and the openness that we all have to bring other people into the fold. So if you want to know more about healthcare, if you want to know how do you go into a hospital or consulting or anything you might want to do, we're always incredibly open. Just talk to your speakers um, and we'd love to help. So I think that's really unique to this conference. Usually all of our board members attend the conference too, and and they're extremely open to any communication with with anyone. And I think that's just tremendous. They don't think they're something better than others. That you really, they're very, very approachable and helpful for you, no matter what your background is, or if you're a student, if you're working at a hospital or a consulting firm, they're open, they're here to help you. It's just as anyone else on the conference committee or any other participants that I ran into in the past. Excellent. Well, this certainly sounds like another great learning opportunity and networking opportunity, uh, just as each of these HSBI conferences have been over the years. We certainly look forward to having everyone joining us virtually. I will give out some last minute details and information just to compliment what uh, Ben and Allie have given you already. If you want to follow the conference, uh, even leading up to the conference on social media, just follow hashtag HSPI 2021. 
You should also be aware of the early bird registration deadline, which is January 8th. If you register before then, you can save up to $100 on your registration fees, which includes admission, keynote presentations, networking receptions, all the good fun things we've got planned on this virtual platform. With that, we certainly look forward to seeing everyone virtually February 24th through the 26th, 2021 for HSPI 2021. Ben and Allie, thank you again for joining us. Thank you, David. Thanks, David. Look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Problem Solved, the IISC podcast, a production of the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineers in Metro Atlanta. This podcast is produced by David Brandt, Keith Albertson, and Michael Hughes, and edited by David Brandt. You can listen to all episodes of Problem Solved and learn about sponsorship opportunities by visiting our website, podcast.iise.org. You can also learn more about IISE at the Institute's website, www.iise.org.